Hi, welcome to Nuclear Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about fission versus fusion reactions. Specifically, we're going to talk about conversion of matter to energy, mass defect, fission reactions, fusion reactions, and a few practice problems at the end. So let's start out by talking about the conversion of matter to energy. The law of conservation of matter and energy states that energy and matter cannot be created nor destroyed, but Einstein's relationship of E equals mc squared quantifies the conversion of mass into energy. The energy produced by nuclear reactions is far greater than that of ordinary chemical reactions as we can see in this particular graphic of a nuclear explosion. This conversion of matter into energy occurs when protons and neutrons are combined into nuclei. The total mass of the nucleus is less than the sum of the masses of the individual protons and neutrons. The matter that has been converted into energy is called the mass defect. A fission reaction involves the splitting of a heavy nucleus to produce lighter nuclei. So for example, the fission of uranium-235. So we have our target nucleus right here. We have a particle that is going to smash into this target nucleus. And then we're going to produce barium-242, krypton-91, three neutrons, and a bunch of energy. Now, if you're saying to yourself, wow, this looks really familiar, you're right, because this is just another way of saying artificial transmutation. So fission and artificial transmutation are basically the same thing. Fusion reactions, on the other hand, are quite different. Fusion reactions involve the combination of light nuclei to form heavier ones. The most common example of fusion occurs in the sun, where hydrogen nuclei react in a series to produce helium nuclei. Extremely high temperatures and pressures are needed to allow the positively charged hydrogen nuclei to fuse into helium. Now, how do you recognize a fusion reaction? For a fusion reaction, we're typically going to either see hydrogen or helium involved. You're going to start out, as you can see right here, with light nuclei, very light nuclei. One of the products is going to be a heavier nuclei, like we see right here, compared to the initial nuclei that you started with. So this one has a mass of 1, a mass of 1, and one of my products has a mass of 2. If I look at the next example, here's helium-3. It starts out with hydrogen-2 and hydrogen-1. Yes, there might be other products like we see when we form an actual helium nucleus. So here's my helium with an overall mass of four, and that came from two different isotopes of helium, one with a helium of three and another helium with a mass number of three. So the big thing to recognize here for a fusion reaction is that we're taking smaller masses and fusing them into larger ones. This is different than fission where you're breaking something apart to get smaller particles. Let's do some fission and fusion reaction practice. So what I'd like you to do is stop, pause the video, do the problems, and then check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Which reaction releases the greatest amount of energy per mole of reactant? Decomposition, esterification, fermentation, or fission? The only answer that even remotely makes sense is fission because fission is a nuclear reaction that will release a lot of energy and all the other ones here are chemical reactions. What occurs in both fusion and fission reactions? Small amounts of energy are converted into a large amount of matter. Small amounts of matter are converted into a large amount of energy. Heavy nuclei are split into lighter nuclei. Light nuclei are combined into heavier nuclei. Okay, so number three is out. Heavy nuclei are split into lighter nuclei. That only goes with fission and not fusion. The same thing, light nuclei are combined into heavier nuclei. That's the definition of fusion. So three and four are out. 
What they both do is that they both convert small amounts of matter into large amounts of energy. So it's all about me, M-E, matter into energy. It's one way to keep it straight. Which net charge occurs in a nuclear fusion reaction? Ionic bonds are broken, ionic bonds are formed, energy is converted into mass, mass is converted into energy. The first two deal with chemical bonding, so those are out. The other two is just making sure that you know that it's always going to be mass is converted into energy. So again, if you think me, the M comes before the E, so matter into energy, which makes the right answer here number four. Finally, given the diagram representing a reaction, which type of change is represented? So we have a particle hitting a target nucleus, forming an intermediate, and breaking down into lighter nuclei and more particles. So that's definitely not deposition or evaporation because those have to deal with phase changes. So you're either dealing with fission or fusion. Now fusion is making something bigger, fusing something together. So the only possible answer here is fission, which means to break something apart. Because remember, this is just another demonstration of artificial transmutation, which we talked about beforehand. So what did you learn? We talked about the conversion of matter to energy. We talked about mass defect, fission reactions, fusion reactions, and finally did some practice questions at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.